All right, so uh, here we have a carbon arc uh, electrode holder. And uh, uh, this is very specific. Uh, it has a little hole that compressed air is going to come out that we can swivel at different angles. We always want this air, air hose to be on the bottom. Now, a lot of stick welders, they hold their electrode holder upside down. Electrode holders are made to be squeezed with the thumb. If uh, 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 you're a, one of those stick welders that likes to squeeze it with the fingers, then you're gonna be holding it upside down, all right? But whether you're right-handed or left-handed, we squeeze it with our thumb, we'll just rotate this hole around. Now, uh, uh, typically when we carbon arc, we'd like uh, to use as much electricity as possible and as much compressed air as possible. Uh, uh, the more, the better. The first time I did carbon arcing, I think I used a 3 8 inch electrode and about 800 amps, right? And I even wanted more power than that. Uh, the machine that we're hooked up today can only put out about 350 amps. And uh, so I got a quarter inch electrode. And uh, uh, this, is, this electrode's made out of carbon and it's just like a pencil lead. As a matter of fact, we can, work, we can write on cardboard with it, all right? And on the outside, they put copper. And one of the main reasons they put that on there is to make it harder to break, all right? To make it strong. So, uh, I have seen rods without any copper on them, right? But uh, uh, they break, break real easy unless they're thick. Now, a lot of times, if people have never done carbon arcing before, they look at this, it looks like a stick welding electrode. They want to put this end in like this, okay? But this is wrong, all right? This is the end that we want to burn, okay? And so we put this this uh, 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 electrode in, and depending on our air pressure, all right, we'll grab it up the electrode a little. And the distance between the air and the metal where it's burning, it's gonna affect how easy it is to remove the metal uh, while you're uh, uh, gouging. Now, uh, what do you call it? We're not using oxygen, right? We're using compressed air. So it's not gonna oxidize the metal very well. So the plate is going to be full of oxidized, unoxidized metal, which is difficult to get off of the plate. So typically every time you gouge, you should clean before you gouge a second time. A lot of times when people just gouge and gouge and gouge, they'll make a pile of unoxidized metal that gets to where it's almost impossible to get it off the plate, all right? We don't like things that are impossible, all right? We want to take it off while it's easy, kind of uh, inspect things, and then maybe gouge a little bit more, all right? And typically, this is used to take out bad welds, all right? So when welders do bad welds and they have to be repaired, there's only a couple of ways we can take away the metal to get at the flaw. One is with a grinder, uh, and if it's a shallow flaw, they'll typically you do that. Uh, we could use a, a, a plasma cutter to kind of gouge into the metal. And nowadays that's used a lot because a lot of people don't have these big thousand amp welding machines anymore. And so a lot of times uh, uh, they'll hook up a plasma cutter and kind of uh, gouge that way. And the other way is with an oxyacetylene torch, all right? But we gotta be real careful because when we start using oxygen, it's easy to gouge right through the whole plate 
uh, uh, right through to the back side. With electricity, we can kind of control the depth of the metal that's removed very precisely. Because electricity will only jump a certain distance and then it goes out. Now when we do this, we want to use reverse polarity. When I first studied uh, carbon arcing, I thought it'll use uh, straight polarity. But uh, reverse polarity is what we want to use. And sometimes when people have older welding machines, they'll actually use AC electricity to do carbon arc gouging. That works pretty well too, okay? So uh, 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 on the side here, I have a, a, a valve switch for the oxygen. And when we turn it on, we want to make sure we turn it on all the way. We never want it only open up halfway, all the way, right? And then, right, we'll uh, come down and gouge into the plate. Now, if we're not too, if we're not careful, we can gouge too deep. If we gouge too deep, we'll have too much of a wall in front of us to remove. So we only want to go down a certain depth, and it's going to be dependent on the amperage and the air pressure, and uh, 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 work our way across the plate. Uh, uh, if we have to go any deeper, then we make a second pass, right? But with more air and more amperage, a lot of times we can do it in one pass, remove a shitload of metal, right? So this is the quickest way to gouge metal that there is, right? And uh, uh, so we should uh, give it a try. Okay. Good point.